Hello, um, you've probably heard that Artic Studio 16 came out, but there's a couple of really nice new features that came out with the new release of the firmware for Artec Leo. Uh, this simple part, I just wanted to show you that we've got some very clever and intelligent functions within the Artec Leo software. It has a function to ignore the background function uh, elements in your things that you want. Um, so avoid scanning all those things that you never needed to have in your scan, just the things you wanted. So when I scan a shape like this, usually I like to do two sides, but sometimes three is better and at different angles. So let's just quickly show you how we can do that. So turn on your scanner by pressing the red button, wait for it to open the project, point towards the object that you want. You can see it on the screen. And then what we can do is we can say start scanning. So here we've got base removal turned on. So therefore the base is not being recorded. And what you'll see is if we go round, the object will turn green when you've covered the areas that you wanted to scan most. Here we can actually move the scanner around into all different positions to help you capture the bits that you want. We'll move around to the other side here a little bit. And sometimes, you know, depending on your ability, you may not be able to reach certain areas. So that's why it's a good idea to be able to actually scan from different positions. So what I'm going to do is just turn the part round. Uh, we can see it's a little bit wobbly. We just want to make sure it sits still and not be moving about before we start scanning. So once it's come to a rest, you might need to support it. We can actually turn on the scanner again, aim towards the part. And what will happen is it will find the part on the table and then when you start scanning, it will carry on scanning from where you left off. So here we can cover the other areas that are in red. Very quickly move around to the other side. Here, there's some bits in there that we need to do. We can look inside here, move the scanner at an angle so that it captures the hidden areas that you didn't get before. So here, I've got some red bits I want to do and move back around. Once you come to the other side, you may have just missed a few bits. You can inspect the part on the screen so you can have a look, but then you can move it to a new position. So for example, I'll turn it round so it's actually pointed this way round. Just wait for it to stop moving. Click on the scanner again. It says point at the scanning area. So we find the part again, move to where you want to start, click start, and it will pick up the part and keep its orientation all the time you keep on scanning. So here we can see there's a few little parts we missed before. We can move around. You can actually put the scanner into those areas very easily. I'll just move across in front and all we need to do is come round to the other side. So that's the basics and then what you can do is you can move back through, you can inspect your part on the screen, turn it round, see what you've scanned and what you haven't scanned. The next thing is to load it into the software and let's get started. So We just go around to the computer and what we can see is on the computer still we've got the display being streamed from the scanner so that you can see what's going on. Uh, you can actually operate the scanner from this as well. So we've got the part on the screen here. Here we're going into our Tech Studio 16, connecting up the Leo via the Wi-Fi. You've got hotspot method or ethernet cable. All we need to do is choose the project and what we're going to do is import the project that we just scanned. We just speed this up in the video to make it quicker for you to see. Once it's open, you've got the raw data on the screen. Uh, you get that displayed in the workspace. People using Leo or any Artex scanner will know this is the process. So what we're going to do now is just run through turning it into a final job. The idea is that you need to go and run the global registration for all the scans. Again, this takes a few moments to do. And once you've done that, then you can choose the fusion method that you're going to use. Sharp Fusion is normally the one that we use for this situation. Uh, you choose the options if you want the holes filled, etc. And once we've done this, the process just takes over. Then all of a sudden, you will be able to get your final fusion, uh, which you can export in any method you want.
Okay, um, just to add to what we were doing just before, uh, we've just taken another object that seems a bit more mechanical orientated. Um, we've got this exhaust pipe uh, muffler or silencer as we call it here in the UK. Um, what we're going to do is take this again. We've got a few hidden areas, so we're going to quickly scan around this with Leo uh, to show you what we can do. Again, probably about three different views. So again, all you need to do, point the scanner here. Uh, we've got the obvious things for the base removal. We've also got the function to remove background objects. So all we need to do is find out where we're going to scan, choose something on the part that we can see. So ready to scan and we can actually move along the part here and you can see very quickly we can gather information. You can see the red areas again where you may have missed. If you've got shiny objects like this, best thing to do is try to point the scanner directly square onto the object. Uh, it would do a very good jo job of picking up the data that you need. Sometimes people would prefer to use a spray. Uh, this of course is available um, at this instant in time. We decided not to put any spray on the part. So here we go, we moved around the object we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. Come back here to get a bit more of the pipe at the end. Also try to scan into the pipe a little bit. You want to try to make sure you get the end so that you've got a good place to start if you are using it for reverse engineering. I'm going to try just to get the back of these little brackets over here. So again, the best thing to do once you've done it once is to inspect it on your screen so you can actually move it around and have a look. We then need to turn the part over. Uh, what I'm gonna do is probably stick it on its back first, here, so that we can get some of the bits out of the way. Um, choose somewhere we've scanned before. So what I want to try to do is find on the part, the same area of the part that I scanned before. So it's best to always start with a piece that you've scanned. And then what you can do is you can move around the object and start adding more data to your scan. So here, just a word to say is that some people believe the two-sided objects work really well, but if you haven't scanned part of the object, the scanner will find it very difficult to pick up from where it's left off. So here we go. And last but not least, we'll turn it on to its other side. Hopefully it'll just stay there for me. Make sure it's not moving around. So back to something we've already scanned. Point at the area where you want to start. It will pick up and find this object. And then you can say carry on scanning. And then you can carry on around the part here. We can see just a little bit, we didn't get around the inside of this pipe, so I'm just trying to move around the end of the pipe to enable it to pick up some data there. We've got this uh, support that's sticking on the side here. It's creating a little shadow on the part, so what to do is move around, move along the part here to the other end, come around where the red parts are, make sure that you've tried to cover all those red pieces. Again, if you haven't got the ability to get down low around the part. Sometimes it's easier to move around the part and turn the scanner around. All we need to do is just finish off, perhaps again, trying to get a piece more of our end of pipe, move away, come back round, and now we're in the position to go back to the computer to load this data into it. As we did before, we're going to import the data. This time we'll just let it whiz through a little bit quicker in the video, save time. Same process though. Load the data in. Once you've got the data on the screen, you can have a look at the raw data. It looks pretty clean to me. So the next process we're going to actually do is to use autopilot. So if you forgot how to do it, Autopilot's the quick and easy way to do everything. 
and take a few minutes off and have a cup of coffee while you wait. But you get a lovely mesh, you get the texture in, you get the finished product, which you can then export out to any of your other software as you wish. So there we go. We've looked at two examples, a simple white shape here, this exhaust pipe system, and uh, I hope it's been useful for you to have a look. Thank you for watching.